I usually don't say a lot about relief pitchers because they don't pitch that many innings, obviously. But I do think that when it comes down to a big crunch time at bat, I think that Josh Hader is the most intimidating presence at the pitching mound. And his ability to strike people out, no matter who you are, makes him a very elite pitcher. And despite the fact that he's not going to throw, he's probably not going to throw that many innings this year. He is going to be feared by many in the MLB. Um, how you guys doing? It is currently July 11th, 2020 here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims. And for this bit of the elite, I was going to get into Josh Hader. Um, the closer for the Milwaukee Brewers, who of course has a lot of controversy surrounding him, but that should you that that still shouldn't shake you from the fact that like he is a very good baseball player. That you shouldn't ignore that fact. He's a probably a wacky dude, but he's still a very good pitcher. So, if you're unaware, he's a 26 year old left hand or or southpaw closer, coming out of Maryland. He was drafted in the 19th round of the 2012 MLB draft out of high school, and then he was eventually traded to the Orioles 2013, and he was eventually traded to the Milwaukee Brewers system, and he debuted June 10th, 2017 for the Milwaukee Brewers. Here's kind of basically what he's been doing. His first year since he's been in the league, it was his age 23 season, uh, he ended. He ended up. He ended up playing in thirty five games. He pitched for forty seven innings. He only allowed twenty seven hits. Finished with sixty eight strikeouts, and he finished with a two oh eight ERA in the games that he played. And this is his age twenty three season. The first game he started really pitching relief for the Milwaukee Brewers. The Milwaukee Brewers would finish eighty six and twenty and seventy six. Not they would finish second in the NL Central, not not qualifying for the playoffs. But this was Josh Hader's first year, and they were thirteen games better than they were the previous year. And Josh Hader was still in his first season as a reliever. He still had a, a slightly above two ERA. He only allowed twenty five hits in forty seven innings that he pitched. Then the second year was when people were aware of what he was doing. He played in 55 games. He pitched in 81 innings. He only allowed 36 hits in 81 innings. That's four nines. That's 44%. Like, in 44% of the innings he pitched, he allowed a hit. And he probably allowed more. But it, that, I, that's the math. He allowed... And then he had 143 strikeouts in, a, in 81 innings pitched. That's almost two strikeouts per innings pitched. And he's a reliever. He finished with an all. He finished with an all star vote, and he he finished seventh in Cy Young voting as a as a reliever as the setup man. He finished with a two forty one ERA in eighty one seasons as as the setup guy for the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, twenty eighteen, the Milwaukee Brewers finished first in the NL Central, where they would beat the Rocky, where they would sweep the Rockies and the NLDS, and lose to the Dodgers in the NLCS in seven games. Christian Yelich won MVP that year, but the people should definitely be aware of what Josh Hader was to that team. Uh, and additionally, he was named uh, he was named the National League Reliever of the Year. And in 2019, which is his previous year, uh, his age 25 season, he made a second All-Star game. And in 61 games, he pitched 75.2 innings, finished with 37 saves, he allowed 41 hits in those 75 innings with 138 strikeouts. Uh, he finished with a higher ERA. He finished with a 262 ERA, which is still sub three. And um, this was this year. He was finally a closer. He was like I said, he was an All Star. He was listed yet again as an All Star, and he pitched an immaculate inning and was the was the reliever of the National League reliever of the year for the second year in a row. I usually don't give a lot of praise to relieving pitchers because they don't pitch that many innings, but Josh Hader is incredibly elite. And even this last year, they finished second in the NL Central and they lost in the, in the NL wild card to the Nationals. They lost in that game. But don't be like, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Josh Hader was definitely a big part of them winning a lot of their games. And considering they barely made it into the playoffs a lot of those games, and there were definitely instances in which they brought it down to the final instant in which Josh Hader helped save their season, made helped their record look a lot better than what it would be without him. That's really all I have to say. Um, he's only really played for three seasons, and he would probably be dominating in the like in, in 
as a pitcher right now if they would let him play. But that's really all I have to say. Josh Hader is a very elite young player who has a lot of years of pitching ahead of him. I mean, he got, I'm pretty sure he got in trouble for saying some racist stuff, and that doesn't excuse anything. You have to know the full picture when looking at it, when looking at him. That still doesn't change the fact that this man almost strikes out. He, he almost averages two strikeouts per innings pitched as a reliever. But I'm going to leave you with that. You can take what I say, how I say it. I understand. But um, I appreciate you for listening to all five and a half, six minutes of this. And just get a chance to look out for my boy, Josh Hader. He's wearing number 71 on the Milwaukee Brewers. And yeah, if you get a chance to see him playing against your team, especially in the late innings, you'll see how dominant and how, like, how intimidating he is as a pitcher. And with that, I'm just going to say peace.